I kind of hate to even say it because then some people are like, oh, you're bragging or you're trying to show off, but just to prove the point because people actually comment on these videos and they say, Jake, does this stuff really work? Or people aren't sure if I'm just like BSing or just like making things up in videos to get like a couple thousand bucks in Google ads by getting clicks. And the fact is I stopped chasing money and I stopped chasing success. This is when I was about 22 years old. And when I stopped, the craziest thing happened. I unexpectedly started attracting huge sums of it. And this is the part that I, like wanted to say, I hate saying it, but I became a millionaire before in, in net worth, not just I made a million dollars. In my actual net worth was a millionaire before I turned 29 years old, which was just the other week. So I was actually setting and, and reading my goals. And so I wanna share with you how, if I could do that, 19 year old college dropout, wasn't sure if it was even possible, and I stopped chasing the money and success, but I did this one thing instead, and when I did this, this opened up the floodgates, and I started to basically become like a magnet to money. Now, the same thing can happen to you, and it could probably happen in a lot greater quantities as well, and in fact, this is really great because it's a lot easier than you think, because if you stop chasing money and success, then by default, it's gonna become easier. You're going to spend less time and get better results. So this is Jake Ducey with jakeducey.com and here's how to stop chasing money and success and make it chase you. So make sure you hit the like button right over there on this side and right over there on this side and let's dive right into the video. All right, so before we get into number one, my wife's due with her baby any day now, literally, and so it could be two minutes from now and I get a phone call or a text message and she's like, yo, what's happening? And it could be a couple more days, but it's happening anytime and that's why I look a little tired, just been getting a lot of things done. We are having a home birth as well, so we've been putting a lot of energy into getting that all prepared. So um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about for the first step to stop chasing money is a quote that was by Ralph Waldo Emerson, and he basically said, I'll throw the exact quote on the screen here so you could read it word for word, but he basically said that you come to a point in your journey where you realize that imitation is suicide and this is what happens with money imitation becomes suicide if you want success in life and I learned this the hard way, but then it was the best thing that ever happened to me because I wanted to be a college speaker. I paid this guy a bunch of money to mentor me. It ended up not working out. I didn't get all the stuff that, or a lot of the stuff that I had paid for, but it was kind of the rest of my money. And so I was in this really bad spot where I didn't have any money, but I also didn't have a plan on how to make more of it because I was putting all my eggs in one basket of becoming a college speaker. The reason I wanted to do that is because I saw this guy that was older than me that was really successful at it making a bunch of money and he seemed to have the life that I wanted so I just got basically tunnel vision trying to be like him and then the rug was swept out under me after I invested all this money and all this time more importantly into trying to be this thing or have this goal and then that got swept out from under me and it sucked really bad for financial reasons, mental, emotional reasons, spiritual, like I was just, I felt screwed. But out of that, I ended up realizing that I was just trying to copy this guy. And I got to this place where I was like, I lost so much clarity in my life. And the result of losing all of that, it actually gave me a newfound clarity. And I realized I didn't even wanna be a college speaker. What I really wanted to do, I said, if I died that night, ask yourself this question. If this is the last day of your life, is the life that you have one that you, if you knew you were going to be passing away, could you say assuredly, I feel like my life was complete? 
And I felt like the answer at that time was absolutely no. I didn't, I didn't feel like I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish and leave what I wanted to leave to the world. And I realized I wanted to have an epic YouTube channel that was inspiring millions of people from all over the world, uplifting the awareness and consciousness of people all over the world. And I wanted to do online uh, courses. I wanted my books to be translated in other languages. And I wanted to do it all through the internet so it was everlasting as well. And I wasn't also on this college grind of school after school after school and then you get all that got to get all these colleges to like you and accept you and I was a college dropout and my hair is really long so a lot of people didn't take me seriously and so I realized imitation was suicide and what I was doing was chasing the money with this guy and when I stopped chasing the money I thought of that idea for my life today and then it took off and very, very quickly, all the things that I just told you that I wanted ended up happening. So I realized imitation is suicide. If you stop chasing the money, but you ask yourself a simple question, what do you really want? What do you really want? And when you come from there, what happens is unexpectedly synchronicities start coming your way. You're no longer afraid of your great idea that you say, well, I can't make money that way because we're told when you're literally like, I want to be an artist. I want to be a musician. I have this business idea. I have this investment idea. I have this nonprofit thing. I have this thing with the church. I have this thing with art and school and education and this is what I want to do. But you can't make money that way. And then we talk ourselves out of it. So if you eliminate that statement, that opens up the key to no longer trying to imitate and follow what other people say is what you need to do to be successful. What you really need to do is be yourself. So step number two out of this process is letting go of chasing, which kind of comes out of what happened. Because once you realize that you don't need to chase it, in fact, when you chase it, it often eludes you because you're in a consciousness of really needing it. You're in a consciousness of a lot of lack and a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry. But the ironic thing is that's happening all subconsciously and the subconscious mind controls our life. So subconsciously, we continue to create from that level of consciousness. We continue to create from that frequency. As Albert Einstein said, you can't solve a problem with the same level of thinking that created it. So you can't solve your problem of lack of money and lack of success. You can't solve your problem of not having as much money and success as you want. If you say, that's a problem, I need more money, I want more money, I want more success, I need more success, this is the problem. You can't solve it from that same level of consciousness. But what we do is we are constantly chasing it. So we're staying in the same level of consciousness of being small, of not having, of being trapped into our limitations and desperately needing it, which means that we're actually continuing to push it away from us further and further. In the Bible, it says to those that have more will be given. And when I was little, I didn't understand that statement. I thought it was stupid, but now I understand it to those that have more will be given. First, you have to be coming from a place of abundance. I wasn't coming from it. I was like, oh, I'd really like to go and do my thing on online, but I'm only getting like 50 views on my videos. So let me go be a college speaker and then I'll do it. And I was talking myself out of what I actually wanted for what I thought was logical and rational. But as Albert Einstein said, logic will take you from A to B, but imagination can take you anywhere. So then you go, okay, I don't need to chase it. I'm a divine being. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And you say things like, I'm a genius. I apply my wisdom. Just start saying that all the time. Say it hundreds of times a day. The first hundred times you say it, it might sound like the stupidest thing you ever heard because you're like, I'm a genius. No way. I'm Bob Smith. I'm dumb and I got a C in English and I'm Jessica and you know, I didn't know anything about money so I can't when you, but when you start doing it more and more and more, you realize, wow, this is actually a true statement because there's only one universal mind here of which we are all individualizations of. You, through your unconscious mind, have multi-million dollar ideas. You, in your unconscious mind, have dormant forces, talents, abilities far beyond what you could ever imagine. You have a perfect memory. You have a perfect imagination. You have the perfect ability to get what you want in life and have it come to you. But you have to trust that. And when you do, you start making decisions out of love and excitement, 
out of logic as opposed to out of logic and fear. You make decisions out of love and excitement as opposed to logic and fear. And most people make their entire financial decisions out of logic and fear. They do it from logic by setting very small goals that they incrementally think they can achieve if they even set goals at all. Most people don't even set their financial goals to begin with. And if they do set them, they make them so small. Michelangelo described it best. He said, the greatest tragedy in life isn't that you aim too high and you miss. It's that you aim too low and you reach it. Think about that. You aim too low and you reach it. And one of the best ways that shows up in our lives is through the idea that you can't make, I can't make money that way. I don't know if I can make money and I don't have the resources and it takes money to make money. And will this really work out? Is this even possible? Do you really think I could do it? Just eliminate it. And when you do, you move your awareness to a higher level. Like pull this image right now. My editor's gonna pull this image of a frequency chart up. So this lower X is where you are right now. This is the present amount of money that you make, however much it is. This is how much you make. You make X amount of dollars a year. Up there on the top X is the level of which you want to get. It's a different frequency. It's a different level of consciousness. It's a different energy. It's a different reality that you're experiencing. So how do you get from there to there? You have to change your level of thinking. And if you change your level of thinking to how can I make money this way, what you'll find is the way will be made for you. And things will just start showing up. Like what happened to me, the rugs pulled out from me, I stopped chasing, I say I wanna go on YouTube, and I make one simple statement, I say this, I don't even care if it doesn't work out financially. I think it will, I have faith that it will, but I don't care if it doesn't, I'm gonna do it no matter what. Because I know this is what I need to do and wanna do. And when you come from there, Boom, it's game over. So I start making the videos, I'm doing my thing, it's not working out, I'm getting like 50, video, 50 views, 60 views on videos as opposed to now having you know, a, a quite different reality than that. But I kept looking with my senses, 40 views, 50 views, oh crap, this isn't working. And I ended up going camping with my wife Ashley and when we were out of service, my video started going viral and I got hundreds of thousands of views in a 48 hour period out of absolutely nowhere. All of a sudden it was game on. So when you let go of chasing, it's summarized best in a quote from Napoleon Hill. And Napoleon Hill wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich. And in that book, Think and Grow Rich, he says a statement that seems absurd. He said, if you think that honesty and hard work alone bring riches, it is not true, perish that thought immediately. Riches, when they come, come so quickly and in such vast quantities that one wonders, where were they hiding all those lean years? That's what happened to me. In one year, my income shifted so dramatically. The only thing I can attest it to is I finally said yes to the thing that my spirit was actually calling me to in life. And when I did, that opened up the floodgates. Riches, when they come, come in such vast quantities that one wonders where they were hiding all those lean years. That's when the money starts to chase you. So I know you have that thing that you really want and maybe you've been afraid of or you're doubting yourself or you're uh, listening to what other people have to say. Just put this in your mind. Thank you, but that's not part of my belief system. Just make that your statement now. Just press cancel, drag the files into the, into the trash bin on the computer, empty the trash. This is the computer. This is the most powerful supercomputer in the world. Drag those files into the trash and every time they come in, you say, thank you, but that's not part of my belief system. Comment that down below, thank you, but that's not part of my belief system. Now, the third and final step is to arrive at creating. So once imitation stops, once we let go of chasing, then it comes to creating. And so many of us are living in a reactionary consciousness with money our whole lives. We're just reacting, oh, there's not enough of it, quickly do something, quickly get some more. And it's like we're in this reactionary place like that all the time. And we never really step back and create. Yeah, you know, there's, I admit, there's a lot of small data 
that suggest how many people set goals. And there was supposedly a Harvard study that they found out that out of a, out of a couple year graduating class, only 5% set goals. And those five people supposedly made a bunch more money. I don't know if there's ever been any massive ones, but I'm willing to bet that not more then one out of every 10 people actually sets written financial goals. I never met anyone in my whole life that did that until I met Bob Proctor. I never met anybody that wrote down, I am earning this much money a month and put it on their wall and read it every day. <laughs> like, I didn't know anyone. And when I decided to change my whole life, I met a mentor and that mentor basically he said, pull out a three by five card and write how much money you want to make on it. Make it so big that you don't believe you can get it. The point of that is to get you out of your level of consciousness. Remember what Albert Einstein said, he said, you can't solve a problem on the same level of thinking that created it. So you have to build a totally new paradigm. That's what he said. So I was making 2000 or so a month and give or take some months 25, some months 1600. And I wanted to make more, but I was like 5,000 would be great. Man, if I could just do that, I'd be the happiest person who ever lived. And Bob said that that's a goal that's not very far off from your original goal. He said, make a goal so big, you don't, you don't even think you could do it. And I thought, what would be that? I thought 20,000. That would be like 10x bigger than what I was doing. That'd be nuts. If I could make 10 times more money than I'm making, I don't even know how that would even happen. But it seems so big, I was afraid to write that number down. So then I changed it to 21,000 since it's kind of a weird pattern interrupt number. So I wrote that I was making $21,000 a month and I started carrying this card with me everywhere I go. I was living from creation consciousness instead of logic consciousness, instead of living from the past. Instead of living from that, I was living from, crea I was living from creation consciousness. Here's what I want. And I read it every single day. I put it on my fridge, I read it every day every night out loud for still to this day, I just, I have new goals to do the same thing. And I didn't end up making $21,000. I, I ended up becoming, I be, ended up making millions of dollars and things just started happening and my life changed forever. And so what I invite you to do in conclusion is to actually go get an index card. I think it's more powerful that some people are like, can I write it in my iPhone notes? Well, ultimately I want to throw my iPhone in the ocean one day in the not too distant future and never get another one. So I suggest instead getting a three by five card and writing on it. I am so happy and grateful. And then write how much money you want to make, write it in the present tense carry it with you, put it in your wallet, put it in your purse, put it in your pocket, make a little statement that says that your, your dream life and put it on the refrigerator or the wall or the mirror and read it every morning and every night out loud and move confidently in the direction of your dreams and unexpected success will meet you in common hours. That's what Henry David Thoreau said, it will just come to you. It will chase you, but you have to trust the process and move through these three steps without looking around and saying, will this work? Will this work? Great things can come your way. I'm telling you unexpected success. This can be your year. Step out of the framework of recession, economy screwed. Remember one simple statement, create your own economy, create your own economy. Now I was just sitting on the couch today and I was like, I have a feeling I'm about to tap into the greatest level of abundance in my entire life. Like I just feel it in the midst of all the, the economy screwed. Say it. I create my own economy. I create my own economy. So this is Jake Ducey with jakeducey.com reminding you to stop chasing money and success and to start to live from creation consciousness, pull out an index card, write what you want in the present tense, write your goal down and then go pursue it in love and excitement, knowing that you can achieve what you want and be what you want in life. So have an absolutely great day. Comment down below. I create my own economy. 
comment down below, I create my own economy. And make that a little statement that you can start to utilize. You create your own economy. You can't solve a problem on the same level of consciousness that created it. You can actually raise your level of awareness and vibrate at a higher frequency, a higher level of thought than the collective consciousness that is so afraid of economic failure. There's never gonna be another job. I'm gonna be screwed. The creators and the innovators are always going to have prosperity and opportunities and that is going to be you. So make sure you hit the like button on this side right over there and this side right over there. The like button is what sends us out into the YouTube universe. So if you enjoy this video, hit the like button right over there on this side, right over there on this side, and be sure to check out my free success hypnosis right there down below. It's jakeshypnosis.com. It's my free success hypnosis that I made to reprogram my subconscious mind and to rewire all those old crappy thought society programmed into me that said that I couldn't make that much money or be that successful or have all the things that I want in life. It's all crap and you can delete that all from your software from this and you can upgrade your software. You can delete the viruses up upgrade the software. So check out my free success hypnosis right there down below. It's as easy as that and see the fantastic things that start to head your way. So it's my free success hypnosis in the description, in the comments. That's jakeshypnosis.com. Have a great day. Thank you for watching this video. And I can't wait for you to go on your three by five card, write it down and hear about the great things headed your way.